I'm Dr. H. Michael Chipwood. And when you want something that you've never had, you have to do something that you've never done. And I want you to know that anything that your mind can conceive or believe that you can achieve it. And then you will be living life without limits. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Life Without Limits. Something big is going to happen to you right now. You will receive everything you need to live the good life. You can be wealthy, successful, and happy. You are now entering into the wealthy place of your life. Wisdom and miracles are coming your way today. We want you to exceed every expectation and achieve your dreams. So here we go. Get ready for your life to change. Now please welcome Dr. H. Michael Chitwood. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Living Life Without Limits. I hope that you're doing great this morning. We are right here in the studio. I'll tell you, we have already had an explosion right here in the studio. I just wish that you could have been here with us and could have seen what took place in this studio. It was absolutely off the charts, unheard of, and we're very thankful for it. Well, good morning to you. I pray that you're having a great, great, great day so far today. We're glad that you're with us, by the way. Thank you for getting up at this time so that we can uh, have church together and be in church together. I want to welcome you today to Living Life Without Limits Potential Church. This is your potential. We believe that with all of our heart. Good morning to you today. It's like I'm right there with you in your home and on your car radio or maybe in a hotel somewhere, but I know that I am with you, and you know that I am because I'm in your heart and by the way, you're in my heart, too. So God bless you today. We're glad that you're here today. If you'll take just a moment and invite somebody, we would love to minister to them today on this special, unique broadcast today. We'd like to have them a part of this. So if you'd like to invite someone, there's now a special button up there that you can push on your phone. Uh, and you can invite all of your Android followers and all of your iPhone followers. You can invite them to join us on this very special program today. So God bless you today. We are glad that you are here with us today. What an honor it is that we can be with you and minister to you and bring you some information and uh, let you see how that these things can change your life. I, I want to mention something to you, and I hope that you'll type this on the screen. I want you to get your little fingers ready because we have a lot of typing to do today. So I hope that you're ready. First of all, I'd like to welcome my executive broadcast director, Miss Debbie Brute Booth. Miss Debbie Booth, she has uh, been with us now almost four years, and um, uh, I want to pay a very special thank you to Debbie for all that she uh, does for all of our 59 social media sites. Very few people, in fact, I don't know of anybody that could run and handle 59 social media sites. So, thank you very much, Miss Booth. Miss Booth, and no, she is not related to the Booth brothers as far as I know. Uh, I want to talk to you today about something that I think is important, and that is that it's entirely possible, it's entirely possible for you to have every desire of your heart and fulfill every dream that you have. It's entirely possible. Can, can somebody type that on the screen today? It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible for you to have every dream come true in your life. Why would you think that something is impossible when Jesus said that all things are possible? How, how would you relate that? How would you go against what God said, that all things are possible to him that believeth? I guess the question then would be to all of us is, do you believe? Do you really believe? Or is it just lip service of you saying that you believe, but you really don't believe? Uh, if you really believed that you could do anything, you would be doing it. 
And you say, well, I'm afraid I'll fail. Yes, there's a lot of people that have tried things and failed, but eventually they got it going. Steve Jobs, and, and I, I could just go down the list of naming hundreds of people, but it's impossible for you to fail if you do what you're supposed to do. So, so I, I believe that anything that you need as far as information, anything that you need as far as knowledge is here. Uh, wisdom and knowledge. I have a lot of people that say, well, we want to be we want to be like you. We want to know what you know, but they've never read one of my books all the way finished. They've never completed a book of mine. Uh, the books that we write are not for me. They're for you. And people say, well, we want to be just like you. and We want to have success like you. Okay. Well, have you read any of my books? And I'll tell you, the worst people is the church people. Oh, they all want everything that you've got. Yeah, they all want everything that you've got. But they've never read any, any of our books all the way finished. They haven't completed one of our books yet. But they want to have everything we've got. It, they're full of bull. We call that bull. And, 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 and I'm so tired, and you probably are too, of these fake Christians that always say they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Hey, we're going to be with you through thick and thin. I've learned what that means over the years. When it gets thick, they all thin out. So you have to understand today that as we go through this process, this is a process that you have to look at. And, and that's the reason why that I invite you to go to drchitwood.com. Drchitwood.com. And by the way, we have a very special Christmas offer that's going to be coming up in the next two or three weeks put together by Meredith. Uh, she should have that together in the next couple of weeks for you there. But it's going to be something that you can give for Christmas gifts to people instead of getting them a toy that they're going to tear up in an hour or two. And I'm talking about men. Now, nowadays, the wives are buying men drones and they're buying them cars, these, these cars you run on the street and airplanes and stuff like that. No, what I'd be buying them is I'd be buying something that would give them some wisdom and knowledge so they can make some more money so that you could quit working. That's what I'd be doing because right now you're having to work two jobs. He's working two jobs just to barely get by. And that's not the will of God. The will of God is for you to be able to be successful, wealthy, happy, and healthy. Those four things are all in the Bible. Successful, wealthy, happy, and healthy. Those things you need to accomplish. The great Christmas package will be coming, and I hope that you will be a part of that. I want to talk to you today about a message that I have been preaching here at the church. And, and I want to uh, talk to you about it briefly because I, I, I want to begin with uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. Now, many times people quote these scriptures uh, and, and they really don't understand um, how this totally works. But I think that you would agree with me today that every person on the face of the earth is a person that God wants to be successful. Uh, you, you do understand today that sinners can be successful as long as they are sowing seed, as long as they're philanthropic or philanthropy in nature. Uh, it, it, it's not just for Christians. It's for anybody that has a seed in the ground. If you sow a seed, you're going to get a harvest. That seed doesn't know if you're saved or unsaved when you put a seed in the ground. Now, the favor of God will help your seed give you a bountiful harvest, but I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about how that four children can be raised in the same home by the same parents with the same set of rules and regulations and covenants in that family, but there seems to be always one have you noticed that there seems to always be one that is, uh, uh, goes astray or is not uh, maybe thinking the way that you would have them to think? Have you noticed that? And I want to talk to you about that, that there's some in a family that's trained the same way, raised the same way, that they're not successful. There's always one or two maybe in the family. But many of the family members, because of the raising of their family, uh, they are very successful. See, it's not the opportunities or life's instructions that I'm really concerned about that create the problems. 
we are going to have life problems. Somebody put that up on the screen is there are going to be problems in life no matter what we do. You say, well, I'm not going to confess that. Okay, don't confess that because you're still going to have problems. There's going to be trials and things that come your way. But what the question is, is how do we handle the problem, the problem and the trial? How do we handle it? That's what makes uh, the difference in our life. See, David was one of eight brothers, seven of which Jesse favored over David. David was not favored by his daddy. In fact, his daddy said he was very insignificant. Jesse, the father of David, had eight sons. Seven of those sons he favored highly. One of those sons he felt like was insignificant. But when David heard that there was something taking place, David knew that he could get ahead in life. And let's add to that, get ahead in the line, because there were seven people lined up before David. Seven was ahead of David in the line. Seven was ahead of David in life. David was at the end. He was number eight. He was the young man that killed Goliath. And as I've told you before, the word Goliath means uh, to uh, strip naked. It means to hold captive. And I was relating that to the term debt. Because you do understand that, Phil that, that David is not even a Philistine name. Goliath is not even a Philistine name. It's a Hebrew name that was given to him by the Philistines. Goliath, I guess, to scare people. But when David heard that there was a reward... Now, you can say what you want to say this morning, but I believe that David was in it for the money. You won't find anywhere in Scripture that the Holy Spirit guided that stone into the giant's head. It's preaching material, and people have added that to their message, which is fine. But there's no Scripture that backs up the fact that the Holy Spirit took the stone and guided it right into the giant's forehead. No Scripture at all. I believe that J David was a skilled slingshot shooter. And I mean, he could hit anything from a long distance and kill it. So when he heard there was a reward, now get this just a minute here. This is back to Jeremiah 29, for I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts of success, thoughts of prosperity, thoughts of peace and happiness, and all the things that I mentioned earlier that God wants for your life. Even the Bible says that he will make you rich and add no sorrow to it. There's nothing wrong with you having wealth as long as you know that you put God first according to the book of Matthew. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all of these things. So it's important that we understand today the reasoning behind this. David got to marry the king's daughter. David's brothers were debt free for the rest of their life. Jesse, David's father, was debt free for the rest of his life. David was debt-free for the rest of his life. I mean, he had everything that he could ever want. But there had to be a reward in it for David to start with because who would want to go up against this uncircumcised giant, the uncircumcised giant, with no reward? There was a reward system in place. And I believe as we look at this today, what we're doing is we're looking at a person that someone, Jesse, considered to be insignificant. I want to tell you today that you are not insignificant, no matter what some family member has told you. Even his daddy told him, you're insignificant, son. You're not a major part of the team here. I have seven sons, and you are the last son that's insignificant. Now, let me tell you that you're not insignificant. You, you mean something to God. You're valuable to God. You're important to the kingdom of God. You have something that God wants you to do because he signed you an assignment. He assigned you an assignment for something for you to do for such a time as this. This morning I'm going to be teaching here in the Bible class and the service here about seasons. How to identify your season because if you're not careful, your season will pass you by. If you're connected to the wrong person, if you're connected to the wrong spiritual covering, then that season will pass you by, especially if your leader doesn't realize and recognize that it's your season for you to move out and step out and to do something. So, so as we look at this, I want you to notice that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 26 there, he talks basically about 
what's in it for me? That's basically the words that David said. What's in it for me? And, 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 and even the people of the world are doing this. But see, opportunities come to us and opportunities pass us by. I guess my biggest question to you today would be is why does opportunities pass you by? When you see an opportunity, what is it that's holding you back from grabbing that opportunity? What is it? What form of procrastination is saying no when God is saying yes? My second question would be is why is procrastination stronger than God's answer to yes? You have to understand today that there's two things that's directly connected to procrastination. They work hand in hand. They, we call them, they have the same DNA, and that's fear and procrastination. So the only thing that I can think of today, and you examine this carefully with me, is that when some dream or some opportunity, oh God, I feel, I feel the power of the living God this morning that's flowing to somebody, you've let your dream just about pass you by. But there's enough left out there that you can grab it and pull it back in. If there's enough left that you can pull that dream back in. Don't let it keep going much longer because pretty soon it's going to be out of touch and out of reach with you and God will pass that dream on to someone else that will do it. Oh God, I pray that that's not you. Father, I pray that someone that's had a dream that they're about to let slip by, that they'll wake up now. Wake them up. Wake up that dream now. Wake up that person. Let them grab that green dream and pull it back into their life and into their future. So you have to understand today that, that it's important for us to look for the edge. We have to look for the edge. Now, a pretty good example of this, I think, would be, would be I think a pretty good example would be is, is that when we look at these things and we know that the trials come our way, we know that successful people see trials as opportunities. Successful people see trials as opportunities. Can I get somebody to put that on the screen? For some reason, everybody, including Debbie and everybody, has stopped typing. Uh, don't stop typing until I give you an instruction to stop typing. You need to learn to submit to authority, all of you, this morning. And my authority request to you this morning is successful people see trials as opportunities. Oh, they're telling me it's frozen up because we have so many people. I, I'm sorry. Uh, so the, it's frozen up because we have so many people that's on the Periscope this morning. Uh, 8.7 million on all of our social media sites, 67 million on Periscope, and it is totally frozen. So if it's frozen, ladies and gentlemen, just bear with it. Hopefully it will unload there in a minute. They're trying to transfer over Android TV, Amazon Fire, and Cross TV now. But you have to understand that every trial is an opportunity. Somebody put that on the screen when it becomes unfrozen. Every trial is an opportunity. Every trial is an opportunity. Let me go to a device here and let me see. Let me see if I can get this unfrozen. I'm sorry that this is frozen on us. Let me see if I can go to second back up on camera two there if we can. Uh, yeah, it's totally. Uh, well, it looks like that it's only frozen on my monitor here. Uh, most of you still should be getting this live. But, but it's important that you understand that that, that every opposition, uh, every trial is an opportunity. See, successful people see trials as opportunities. Unsuccessful people see trials as opposition. My question to you this morning is how do you see your trial? How do you see your problem? How do you see your difficulty that's come your way this week? We all know that we've had plenty of trials and opposition this year you have i have we've all had trials the question would be is how do we handle a trial do we let it become an opposition and become on top of us uh, i'm sorry but we're not getting much success on this meredith on the frozen on the frozen monitor what can we do to get this unfrozen can you switch over to one of the other networks because we're frozen up totally on this um, I, I hope that you're still hearing this. I hope you're still getting this. Um, uh, it looks like that we're totally frozen all the way around. But we'll keep going with our message this morning. Because in the book of James chapter 1 verse 2 it says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. He is telling us that when you're in a trial, you don't need to be down and out and go down and bundle up in a, some kind of a curl in the floor, you need to count it all joy. See, Joseph would have missed his opportunity if he had not recognized himself in Potiphar, Potiphar's house and Pharaoh's jail. I mean, you're talking about the first Me Too movement. Boy, 
I wish we had a picture of this lady to put up because uh, this this is where the first Me Too movement really created right here. This is where the first Me Too movement started right here. And there's a bunch of ladies out there that's joined in with some of these evangelist ladies that's preaching against men and how bad we are and things of that nature. But if you really want to know about the first Me Too movement, I don't know. Are we still frozen up? Are we still frozen up? Uh, well, this monitor here is totally frozen here, so you may want to uh, come do something. I see nobody's name, so if I'm not calling your name, it's simply because that I can't see your name because it's frozen because we have too many people or so many people on this morning. So this monitor is totally locked down. You know, the devil always finds some way to do something here in this broadcast. I don't care what it is. He is a liar. But let me tell you about the first Me Too movement. If you've got that picture of, of, of Potiphar's wife, I'd like to put it on the screen if we could because she looks like one of the people that kind of started the Me Too movement, in my opinion. But this is where that, uh, this is where that Joseph, uh, there she is right there. Leave that up for just a minute. That's actually a true picture of Potiphar's wife. Now, we really don't, really don't know her name. They assigned her, the Hebrew scholars, uh, the Jewish scholars, excuse me, assigned her a name. Uh, but we don't really know her name, but that's what, Potiphar's wife looked like that's an actual picture now she wanted Joseph to go to bed with her and to sleep with her to make love to her or actually just to have an affair to be perfectly honest with you now when Joseph refused to go to bed with her now this is Potiphar's wife and if you have to you have to admit it looks a lot like Cher does anybody agree with that it looks a whole lot like Cher uh, you know who Cher the singer is, don't you? She's big on that Me Too movement stuff, man. I mean, big, big, big on that. So, so it's important that you understand that when Joseph would not go to bed with Potiphar's wife, she had Joseph put in jail, in prison, because her husband, Potiphar, was an officer in Pharaoh's army. So he just picks up the phone and says, Hey, I just got raped by Joseph total lie I mean a total lie I just got raped by Joseph and all of a sudden Joseph is in jail so so I, I want you to know that we need to make every opportunity a worthwhile gain we, we don't need to take these opportunities that we have we don't need to take these opportunities and just let them pass us by see see I believe that the best of your life is yet to come and just some, because somebody makes an accusation against you doesn't mean that it's true. Because there's a lot of people that make false accusations every day of your life about you. Employers, employees, co-workers, I mean people at church. I mean some of the most vicious speaking people that I've ever met are people that's in church. Not our church necessarily, but in church. They love gossip. They love to talk about people. I'm sorry, I can't see any names, so I can't call your names. But anyway, I just wanted you to know that David looked for opportunities. Uh, he, he wants you to know that your opportunity will come, but it's not going to come without opposition. It's not going to come without... See, there's some people that just think life is a bed of roses and you just float through life. We call them floaters. James called them a floater. He says you're, like, you're, you're kind of like double-minded. You're, you're like a ship on a sea tossed to and fro not knowing which way to go. You're a floater. You never have any problems. You're not supposed to have any problems. You can't handle problems. I mean, all you want to do is just have a perfect life with no trials. That's against the Bible. That's against the Word of God. So it's important for you to understand that if you're a believer that only believes that God is going to show up in your life when everything is rosy, then that's not even scriptural. Usually God shows up when everything is not rosy. I'm a test to that, and you are too. God shows up when everything is not going well. God shows up when things are not moving the way that they should be moving. God shows up when you was passed over and you didn't get that promotion. God shows up when you didn't get that job that you wanted. God shows up when you didn't get that raise. That's when God shows up is when there's trouble and opposition and everything is going against you is when God is going to show up and show himself mighty in your life. So therefore, I want you to know that today that you have the opportunity to do something that's incredible in your life, do something different. I want you to know today that as we look at this, I, I want you to be a part of our conference that's going to be coming up 
on December the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. I want you to mark those dates down in your calendar, if you would, please. We start on December the 4th, and I want to give you the schedule and the itinerary, if I can. On December the 4th, we begin at 1 p.m. So you don't have to come in Tuesday night and spend the night if you don't want to. We'd love for you to. I'll have a special meal here on that morning with me, but you can start, the, our service starts at 1 o'clock on the 4th, which is a Wednesday. And then we have a business finance and information meeting from 1 to 2 conducted by me, the general overseer of ICCM. And then at 2 o'clock, we have a workshop, and I forget the titles of these workshops, but they are off the charts. And then at 3 o'clock, we have a workshop, and then we are finished with all of our meetings until the next day. And I want you to know that if there's a possibility here that you will be able to do some great teaching and hear some great teaching that you've never heard before. But you need to go to ICCMWorldwide.org and register. And then on Thursday evening, we begin at 6.30. We have workshops all day Friday, sessions all day Friday. And then we have sessions on Saturday morning. And then we conclude at 12 o'clock. Love to have you to stay over for Sunday morning church if you can. I pray that each and every one of you will register for December 4th conference and be here. All Warrior Bride intercessors, state chapter presidents, and area supervisors, you need to be here. Special appointments will be occurring on that day. So I pray that you will be here with us. Also, don't forget about our fish fry that's going to be here on December, on October the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. On the 11th, we have a service that begins at 6.30, a special speaker that's going to blow the roof off here. I mean, this is an incredible speaker. You will love this speaker. And then on uh, the next day, uh, we begin our conference, uh, uh, our fish fry. We begin our fish fry on Saturday morning with a special meeting and breakfast with Dr. Chitwood at 8 o'clock with all my staff. We have a meeting that I want to meet with you and discuss some things with you. I also want to have a breakfast with you. And then our fish fry and concert on the big stage starts at 10 a.m. I would love for you to be a part of this incredible event here, October 11, 12, and 13. Would you join us? It's totally free of charge. There's no charge, and we would love for you to be here with us. We appreciate each and every one of you. I'm sorry I can't call your names and recognize you today, but my monitors here are totally frozen up, and apparently they don't know how to fix it. So nothing I can do much about that except the last thing that I see on my monitor that was frozen, it says, you are valuable to God. So I'll just repeat that again, that you are valuable to God. I have no way to recognize any of you today. I apologize for that today. We have a technical error today, and apparently our staff doesn't know how to fix it. So I just wanted to let you know that we have these special events coming up. Bishop Darrell Croft will be ministering here on October 13th. By the way, he's bringing his whole cooker. If you've never seen his cooker, he has a cooker. We're going to be having catfish and chicken. We have uh, potato salad, baked beans, coleslaw, and all of the ladies in the church are making desserts. I've already seen 12 desserts that's being made for that day. The uh, program starts at 10 a.m. on Saturday, and we'll go to about 2 o'clock basketball, and we have cornhole, and we have games and things under the direction, our athletic director under the direction of Gary Red and his wife, Brittany Red. They're going to be in charge of uh, putting together all the games and contests. And by the way, these games, when you win these, you get cash money as a prize. So be sure that you're here. All of you that's in the local area of Chattanooga, Tennessee, be sure that you invite somebody. Everyone is welcome to come. If you are coming and you're not a part of Celebration Church, you need to let us know so we can make sure that we prepare plenty of catfish and plenty of chicken for you. God bless each and every one of you today. I know that this is going to be an incredible day for you. So we want you to know that you have to be like David, and you have to run toward the challenge. Wouldn't that be good is to run toward the challenge? Why is it that there's so many people that run from a challenge? Uh, we, we, in, in the old days, you might remember this. I hope that this is not politically incorrect. I mean, all the things that I learned back then is now politically incorrect. But we used to call you chicken. You're chicken. And, and people are chicken to run toward their dream they're they're afraid to run toward the challenge they run from it but David was different David had something that no one else had he was an expert slingshot shooter no matter what anybody says the guy could shoot a slingshot and could kill 
and, and, and he ran toward that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 48. David didn't wait for the opportunity to come to him. David ran toward the opportunity. Stop procrastinating and stop putting out these fleeces that people put out. You do understand that we had no fleeces after Acts 2. After Acts chapter 2, you've got the Holy Ghost. There's like this lady, she put out a fleece. Because you do understand the devil can answer fleeces. There's no fleeces after Acts 2. The devil can read and answer fleeces. It's like this lady, she put out a fleece. She said, um, and she's a heavy set lady, four or 500 pounds. That's a big woman. If you, if you, if you know anybody that's four or 500 pounds, that's a pretty good sized lady. But she put out a fleece. She said, God, if it's your will for me to have some donuts today, he said, I want you to have the light on that says hot. And I want there to be a parking space right in front of the front of the store so I don't have to walk. Now, she's 500 pounds. So she drove around the place one time. There's no parking space, and the sign was known. She drove around the second time, the third time, the fourth time. But on the 13th time, the light was on that says hot donuts, and there was a parking space right in front. She said, God, you must have heard my prayer. Well, you can take that any way you want to take it. But that could have been the devil reading her fleece that she put out because she didn't need any more donuts. She's big enough. So the day you have to understand that what God has for you is that you don't want to leave the job half done. And what I mean by that is even though he hit him with that rock right in the middle of the head, he went up there then and took his sword because David didn't have a sword. And what did he do? He finished the job. Don't leave the job half done. Whatever you've been assigned to do in the church, do it with all your might. Don't half do it. If you can't get all the way in with the pastor and you can't be all the way with the pastor and everything that he does, then get out. You don't need to do something half done. I hate these Christians that just do stuff halfway. It's not what God wants. God wants you to do it good and excellent and all the way. So David runs up there and said, hey, you got a rock between your head, buddy, but I'm going to make sure I finish the job. I'm not going to leave the job half done. He takes his sword out of his sheath and he cuts his head off. And as soon as he did that, all of the other people ran because they knew that David had done something that nobody else could do. You have to understand that some things in life are meant for you to handle and not for others to handle. God wants you to take charge and do what you're supposed to do because God knows if he can get this thing in you and you can get going and you can get started, that God is going to do something great through you. You are not insignificant. No matter what somebody has told you, your brother, your sister coming up, your high school teacher, your principal, your pastor maybe, some family member, you are not insignificant. You are very significant in the army of God. And if you're born again today and you're living right for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, then all things are possible and you can do anything that you put your mind to. Anything that the mind can conceive, anything that the mind can believe, you can achieve. Oh God, I wish that somebody would put that on the screen today. Everything is locked down. There's so many people on today. We're locked down everywhere. Anything the mind can conceive and believe, you can achieve it. So it's important for you to understand today. That Saul killed thousands, but David killed tens of thousands. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you approach your opportunity? How are you looking at life's opportunities and dreams for you? I believe today that some of you are getting ready to move forward in the most incredible way that you've ever dreamed in your life. It's there waiting for you. God says, here it is. Take it. Don't let this dream pass you by like an escalator and you're standing on the side. It's passing you by. Grab it before it goes by. Because God is telling you today, if you don't grab the dream, if you don't do what I put in you to do, He says, I'm going to pass it on by on that escalator and the next person in line is going to get it. Be careful. Be careful today. I'm giving you a warning today. Be careful today that you don't let your dream pass you by. When you come to the end of this life, you'll say, what did I do? I should have done better. I should have done. I should have, could have, would have. You're in the should have, could have, would have group. I wish somebody could put that up today on this screen. Should have, would have, could have. Oh, God. I feel that somebody is moving out of the should have, would have, could have. Should have, would have, could have. You need to move into the position that I'm going to do it. I'm going to accomplish what God has put in me to accomplish. My question to you today, are you ready? Type that on the screen, somebody. Are you ready? If you're tired of struggling, 
if you're tired of barely getting by, if you're tired of not accomplishing what you want to accomplish, and you're living life week after week, way below what God has orchestrated for your life, I want to tell you today that you need to stand up strong and you need to declare to the enemy that no longer am I going to take the stuff that you've been handing out to me. I'm putting you on notice right now, enemy. I'm putting you on notice. I'm issuing a cease and desist warning to take your hands off of my dream. Take your hands off of my life. Stop throwing these bad negative thoughts into my life. I'm going to turn my life around. I wish somebody could just take their face. I'm going to turn my life around. Turn it around for God right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare it to be so now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank God that you're able to recognize the opportunities in your life. That's what we're here for. You also need to know that I'm passionate, passionately in love with your dream. I want you to be so successful in life. I want you to have every desire that you have. Keep God first. Make sure that you honor God with your generosity. And always make sure that you give God the praise and glory for the dream that's been completed and fulfilled in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. I wish I could see your comments. All of our monitors are frozen here because this was a powerful explosion day. I hope that it's still available for you to hear these words. If it is, I'd like to offer to you at this time I want to receive an offering. And the offering I want to receive today is your seed for iPaul. This is your iPaul offering. Don't let these young students down. Don't let these young ministers from 13 to 21 down. They have a calling on their life. And if you don't help them with a calling, then you will be responsible for the fact that they maybe never accomplished what God placed in them. It takes money for these young ministers. We take none of it here, but it all goes to the young ministers and the scholarship program of them studying the Word for two years so that they'll be ready to preach the gospel here on the big stage here at ICCM this coming World Conference. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see us double this year. I'd love to see that, wouldn't you? So I want to encourage you today to pay your tithe here. ICCM Worldwide is where you can do that. You can go to ICCMWorldwide.org and you can pay your tithe right here. You can sow your seed for the harvest that you need. And you can also sow a seed into our I young, I Paul Young Ministers of the Gospel. My heart is developing young ministers to preach the gospel so that this word of God, so that the word of God can go around this earth and everyone that wants to hear the word will hear the word. Even those that don't want to hear it will hear it. We have young preachers coming up and we need your help. So today, give today, sponsor an iPaul young minister today. All I can say is if you have ear to hear, then let God speak to you now at this time. God bless you. Thank you for your giving. ICCMWorldwide.org. And by the way, I'd like to thank all of you that's been faithful. You've been generous and you've been faithful. But we need more sponsors for iPaul and ICCM. Would you please consider that today in your giving? Praise God. I can assure you that every penny that you give goes toward the iPaul student program, Save America's Churches. It's all, it's all the things that we're doing here at ICCM. God bless each and every one of you today. We thank you for being with us today. Uh, the broadcast is a little difficult when you can't see the names, you can't see any any comments, so it's a little bit difficult today. We apologize that all of our monitors are frozen up. Um, it was open at first, and it just froze up. But God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. And just remember, when you want something that you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. I'll see you next week. Come on, let's get going. Come on. Let's celebrate.